Let's talk about little tips and tricks. So I probably could have taken this and shoved this in the art part of the previous slide in the introduction. I put it down here because hopefully I've talked about some stuff now and then the tips and tricks will actually be a little more applicable. So I've taken some of that part, so I cheated a little bit. That art of testing bit is not, wasn't the full story. There's some other stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. It's really broken down into these three um, topics, okay? And depending on what your role is in your company, some of it might be more applicable, less applicable, and how much uh, ceremony and stuff like that. So I perfectly give you permission if it doesn't apply to you to tune out and whatever you want to do. And then hopefully we'll pick you up on the question side if we got more questions, okay? So let's talk about software tools, okay? There are tons out there. I'm picking a couple to show you. And depending on the way the internet connection, I might show you a couple logins and stuff like that. But really, this is scratching the surface. This is supposed to whet your appetite if this is the type of stuff that you want to like use, okay? So, I want to give you a definition of quality and a definition of testing. What I would say is, testing is finding any bug. Okay, so you find it, jot it down. Put it in some system, write it down. You'll see this, I'll talk about this later if you didn't find it. If you didn't write it down, it didn't exist. But the idea is, testing is finding any bug. You find a bug, you could jot it down. I would say quality is about fixing the right bugs, right? So, so people use this sort of uh, interchangeably, like quality and testing, quality assurance, quality experts. Uh, quality experts, actually, QE is uh, one of the terms that SAP uses for their testers. <laughs> uh, but the idea is here, I wanted to kind of show that, like, we did. Remember, we talked about creating a test and stuff like that. Really, the goal is about fixing things, right? Quality comes from fixing things, okay? So some of the tools that we have are not just about helping tests. It's about helping how you fix things. So the two tools, there's a whole bunch of them, but the two ones I wanted to show you is bug tracking system and a test management tool. And depending on how keen you guys are, I can show you the live demo. If not so keen, then we can kind of move it on. You'll just know that when somebody's talking about a BTS or a TMT, that's what they're talking about. Bug tracking systems. So they, bug tracking systems assist in the collection of bugs, okay? They don't actually do any of the testing or any of that. What they do is sort of like uh, a way of collecting all your different bugs and stuff like that. Because you're collecting them in this kind of uh, format, allows you to try triage and prioritize bugs. Remember we talked about fi fixing things? Because that's key, right? You don't, wanna f you don't just fix bugs in the order they report it. <laughs> that, that would not be. A pleasant thing to do. Uh, manage, but it helps you manage the flow, the workflow of bug management process, and they offer some statistics and metrics. Generally, so that's what the tool does because it has the data for you. It can do these things for free. That if you did it yourself by hand, it would take a long time. What I would say in a bug tracking system, it takes this into this. Okay. But the idea here is that you know that's what we're talking about: organization, information, architecture, all that stuff. We talk about uh, all that stuff is like knowledge, experience, data, kind of the tier pyramid here, right? This is somewhat useless. Try finding a book in there. <laughs> Try finding any book in there. But the idea is that's why we have libraries and bookstores are laid out in this way. It's the organization of that is actually more important than sometimes the data itself. If it's not tech, if it's not organized and arranged in some logical format to you, it might as well just be garbly goop. What's the difference between this book and that book, right? Test management tool, yet another type of tool that we're it assists in the collection of test cases. So it doesn't collect the results so much to speak. It's talking about collection of test cases. It allows for test tracking, right? So I use the word tra tra tracking and not coverage because coverage is a very nebulous type of term, right? You know, coverage, are we talking about 80% of code, 90% of code? It doesn't, you don't compile your code into these tells. What they do is they tell you how much, how many test suites you might have run, how many test scenarios you might have, how many test cases eventually is it, and it gives you coverage based on that. Not necessarily coverage, I don't want people to misinterpret that as, does it tell you that you, you, you hit every 80, 80, 80 to 90 screens? It, it's, it doesn't go into your, your, your spec or anything like that and suck things out. It's meant to be sort of this collection of the data of the test cases. Good thing about it, it facilitates reuse. So if you do this often enough, you start building and you can build up leverage on what you did yesterday and the day before and the day before. So, give me another photo, right? Like, I mean, test management tool, right? <laughs> give me a half inch hex, you know, like out of this, right? And really, you want to be here. Like, hopefully, if you have a workshop, it looks more like this and less like this. <laughs> Isn't this the drawer where you have all those uh, cables for your phones that you don't have anymore? <laughs> Here are some that I've used. Actually, there's probably about two or three more that are just not very, very popular. I know Meyer, he, he, him back there, they, uh, in Waterloo, they use a home-baked 
Bill and those guys use a home-baked uh, uh, testing suite. Uh, people have collected their own, right? I mean, uh, <clears throat> but these are some of the most famous ones. And uh, you guys, any guys big Apache users? Yeah, so you should be familiar with Jira, right? Right. So, do you know where the name Jira comes from? No. Well, not just that for anything. It's actually short. For, it, it's actually short for Gojira, which is the Japanese way of saying but, uh, Godzilla. But uh, yeah, that, that's why it's, it's called. Uh, uh, SAP actually uses Jira for a bunch of our processes with a Green Hopper Agile Scrum plugin. But uh, yeah, Jira, Bugzilla, TestLink. Uh, these are all Mantis Bug Tracker. The one I'm going to talk about today is open source one that's free, because free is always the right price, right? <laughs> uh, okay. I know there are other competitive markets for us, and I, I'm not here to give you an evaluation. What I want to show you is one open source, because in case there's a low barrier entry, if you want to kind of go and take a look at it and, and, and for in, in your smaller projects, you can probably do for very little barrier entry. If you want to go on the pro models, the little guys will convince you that you know there's certain features. Um, like I said, a lot of the ones I use were open source. This is the one. What we used it for was in tracking internal and external issues. Great thing about Mantis was that uh, has kind of different a login basis, and you can actually change and you can actually set um, logins for external and internal users. So external users can actually log in and log bugs. They can't change settings and stuff like that, and they can't. And you can even have bugs that are internal bugs that people won't see. So you, maybe a person who downloads your video game doesn't want to know that the previous version melted their phone because <laughs> they might not go back to you, right? So the idea, this is very important here about tracking internal and external issues based on login. Uh, track individual team, pro, uh, team and individual processes. This one's huge for us. We use it more, if we did nothing else, we would use it as uh, tracking the progress on things that we're going to fix. This is very, very important for us. We prob I would probably say that, you know, even if I did triage something else outside the product, I would definitely use a product like this just to make the workflow of things like we'll see the what life cycle, but you know, how, you know, is a bug verified? You know, you know, is it closed? You know, is it not applicable? That type of thing. Fixes and new features and customer releases because all these products are built for this kind of models. I think. Uh, well, you guys were talking about different versions, right? So very key that you have a product, bug testing product that's very good supportive of versions because right now, especially for mobile, release like. How often do you release? You go in, and how many times does the App Store tell you you've updated something? You know, somebody found a bug somewhere. We are not talking about client-server model. Like, you know, it's not like banks. Like, they don't install Windows as a server pack one, right? Like, it happens like, I told somebody, I'm like, how many times do you update, you know, your, your, your whatever app versus like how many times you reinstall your OS for the newest upgrade, right? Like, we're talking in those mobile years, right? There's internet years, and then there's mobile years, right? Like, we're talking very short cycles. So you need a product that can handle that. And then uh, we actually, it's open source. It's actually, this one's actually based on PHP, PHP. So we actually had some people modify it slightly for us, so we actually do some estimation inside of it. Uh, typical one, Bugzilla, almost the same thing. Uh, we use that internally too. This is what it kind of looks like. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about it, but just to kind of get some of the workflow things, you can, you can't. The reason I'm going to tell you is because normally you can read this, but because it's so small, you can't. These are short kind of uh, cues here that show like, for example, assigned to me, reported by me, unassigned, things like view issue, report issue, my views that you can set filters, you can have summary, you can manage users in here, you can do all that kinds of other things. I kinda, I'm gonna see if I can get on the internet and log in, but uh, one of the reasons that I was talking about is about workflow. Workflow is very, very important, right? So, what we have are we have these states, and they're actually, Oh, you can't see in this. They're actually outlined at the bottom of the screen here, but the idea is they're color coded for this. Uh, Bug Bugzilla has slightly different, all of them have slightly different, but the idea is you have something that's new, you acknowledge it. Okay, and knowledge is a key one. These are all arbitrary, you can change the states, you flick them on and off yourself, but the idea is it's meant for a workflow that ideally works like anybody can enter a bug, right? So you got it's always new. Nobody touched it, nobody verified it, nobody did anything. You acknowledge it, which means you say, hey, you may have retried it, or you acknowledge the fact that you read the bug, okay? You may triage it and assign it. So there's, in here, there's so much, so treat your process, whatever you want to do, add a priority, fix the priority, that kind of stuff, segregate what target version. The idea is you, you may assign it, and they might go back to knowledge, depending on that floor, but then they eventually get resolved. So this is where it's very, very key. You need this software or something, so you can go back to your coders and say, you resolve bugs. 
testers or somebody else closes box. To see there's two different boxes here, what that means is that uh, sometimes people say what they think they said, but they don't actually hear what they heard. Right? So the, idea here, the idea here is that they may think they solved the problem here, but in the perfect case scenario, the person that logged the bug is the one that closes out because they verify it. Because they might have made a mistake, they might have made a mistake when they logged the bug, or they might have only logged a particular portion of the bug they had in mind. But the idea is it's very, it's like editing your own essay. Coders love doing this. They love closing bugs because it's all kind of never had to hear it again. <laughs> the idea is here, you want to take it, they tell them, coders resolve bugs. <laughs> okay, you resolve bugs and then we close it. Because the idea is we could take a resolve bug and we can reopen it because it may not fix the right thing. It might have changed something idea, right? And there's actually a couple actually other states, it's like UAT and stuff like that, but the reason, like I said, the workflow here is very important. Everybody has their role, right? Everybody has their role. Developers will fix the code, right? But somebody else has to validate. Ideally, if your team is big enough, the person that found, found uh, fixed the code may not be the person that validated it. Remember, this thing is not a test planner. What it is is that it manages the collection of bugs and the workflow process, right? Mm -hmm. So what it does is it doesn't rebuild your software, it doesn't do the regression testing for you, right? You may have, you can't resolve, you can't, you say you can't close a bug until you do the regression test, you run a unit test. You can build that in your workflow. But the idea is you have window here, okay? Triage bugs. Window here, you know, unit test. You know, he person can change the assignments and stuff like that. Work, but the idea is that you, because you have these discrete workflow states, you've integrated points that you can interject the necessary steps that you need to do. Right? That's why the software is important. I, I think people get kind of caught up in all these things, all these features and stuff like that. Really, if I had to use this thing, I could even use Excel or something like that. It's the states that are important. That's why I'm trying to get to you. I don't want to show you all the glitz and the glam that people show you. The reason I would use this is because of this workflow. I don't want developers closing things, right? I don't want developers working on the newest bug that comes in because it may not be important to me because it might not be triaged, right? And that stuff like that. These states exist so there's a workflow. 